Hi everyone. Um, so we are back and um, right now I want to talk a little bit about grids and kind of getting started in, um, in uh, Illustrator for this project. We are going to be using Illustrator for a variety of reasons that I'll talk about in a minute. But before we get into that, I want to talk about creating a grid and structure. Now, this project, um, I didn't stress having you do a grid before you did your sketches, but at this point, I would like for you to start thinking about grid and structure. Um, we will definitely continue toward um, considering grid and structure as we move through this class, but I don't put a ton of stress into it for, for a lot of reasons in this project because I feel like as you start to develop these, the, the structure will be, um, you know, apparent because you are putting certain elements on the page and they have to relate. And so sometimes that doesn't always work with a grid. But I did want to start out talking about a grid. A grid is simply the structure that holds up the information that we don't necessarily see. You can see that this has a grid that is probably very much like this, a multi-column grid. And you can see that they've used three columns and then they've used one column and then they've used two columns for the picture. Um, I could have zoomed in to do that. Um, but you can see that there's all kinds of variety in the structure and the placement of these columns. And that's because they picked a, a grid with a lot of diversity. Um, and so something like this that has multiple columns, um, they could have gone with a simple two column here, but you can see how much activity and variety they've gotten um, in that page because they didn't. So I wanted to start there because I felt like it was important for you to kind of understand um the role of the grid and to try to work it in as much as possible um, but again a lot of it will be playing off the title that you create so i don't really stress it so we're going to come into illustrator and talk a little bit about getting that document going i don't know how familiar you are with with illustrator um, but i give the same kind of basic um uh, demos in all of my classes. So this is very much as if we were face to face. We would be doing these same demos in class. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a new document. Our uh, poster is 20 by 24. So if I go to file down to new document, um, I can see that my document is in points. So the first thing that I want to do is click on print because we're going to be doing print. Um, that's important because let's let's look down here. It says CMYK, C for cyan, M for magenta, e, well, Y for yellow, and K, K for black. If I print, if I click on this, you'll notice that it has RGB, red, green, blue. So anything that's web or on screen should be RGB color combination but anything that's printed should be um, CMYK. So that gives us um, our first starting point. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we come up here and we make sure that this is in inches. So our composition is 20 by 24. Most people end up doing vertical compositions, but you are more than welcome to do a wide composition um, and make it shorter. So, you know, if we wanted to do a 24 wide, um, and a 20 high. Um, you can see that we have a horizontal um, composition. I'm going to do a vertical. You know what? Let's let's do this. I'm going to do a horizontal composition and see how it impacts us. So um, that is something to consider. Now, um, these are bleed sittings. You don't really have to click on them. And then there's more sittings under here. We don't have to worry about that. Um, all we need to do is, oops, make that 24 um, oh, with 24 height all right so there we go um, you do have the option of multiple uh, artboards here so if you are the kind of person who wants to work on you know three different versions of this poster at a time and have a little variety in between give yourself extra artboards i'm going to go ahead and add three artboards even though we'll probably not use them so you can see that we have three artboards 
The first thing that I do when I come in here is come to view and go down to uh, rulers and show rulers. Uh, the reason why is because the first thing that I want to do, actually, I'm not going to do this because I don't want to see these other things. Um, when I design, I tend to want to really focus on whatever I'm designing and having those multiple artboards for me um, is too much visual distraction. Um, but it, it is completely fine if that's your thing. So I'm going to go to view. Um, I'm just uh, easily distracted. Show rulers. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some basic guidelines that I don't want to like move past. So I want to give myself um, probably about a half an inch all the way around. Um, and that is because I don't want to come anywhere near that with any information that would be critical. And I'm actually going to give myself a little bit more space at the bottom. I'm going to give myself three quarters of an inch. Um, the reason why we give a bigger bottom is because um, visually with the weight of the composition on there, um, sometimes it can um, feel uh, distracting or it can feel like it's smaller because of the weight of, of whatever is on there. A poster like this, not likely to happen but uh, safety first, I always say. All right, um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose some, uh, some examples and I'm going to, let me tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick from my favorite book, The Color Index. Um, and I'm going to put this up here because I highly recommend you guys consider buying the color index. Oops, didn't work for just a drag. Um, but I'm going to use the color index to get us going. Now, and I'm going to, oh, it did put this. So this is what the cover looks like. You can buy this on Amazon. I don't require that you buy any books, but I am going to be encouraging it encouraging you to consider some books. This is a book that will take you through every aspect of your career. You can use it in 50 years and it would still be great because color is still going to be important. So I'm going to pick out a color um, palette. Now we could also do something like uh, go to Pinterest And I don't know how it knew, but it seemed like it would. Be. So I could I could come here and pick out a color palette as well. Um, I really like what's happening here, so maybe we'll bring that over. Um, ooh, totally dig this. So this is another option that is free. Um, there are also all kinds of websites that you can go to um, that will allow you to um, come up with a color palette. So we're gonna we're gonna stick with this guy. I think I'm gonna actually work off of this. So anyway, I would would encourage you to go check out color palette. I'm gonna pull these guys over here so that they're nice and ready for me. I'm actually going to pull this on top of this because I feel like it relates. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a background color. I am actually leaning toward having a really bold blue in the background. I'm really into blue right this minute. Notice how I went further. I'm going to do that again. I'm outside in this gray area. That gray area is called the bleed. You want to be beyond your canvas size. And we can still see a very small light black line there. Um, and when it's a lighter color, we see it even easier. Actually, let's go ahead and use a lighter color. Let's do this. I might change my mind later. Um, mm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go bold. Um, 
I still might change my light my my mind later. Notice that this has layers. So think of this as having layers like an onion has layers. And the good news about this is I can lock this layer so that I can't move anything if I um, am working on another. So I heavily encourage you to use layers, especially if you're new to Illustrator. So the first thing I'm going to do is First thing I'm going to do is decide what I want to say. And so um, you could put 24 rules of type, or you could come up with um, uh, something else. I'm going to come up with typography speaks. So I'm going to type in typography, and I want it to be this green color. And I know it's real small right now. I'm going to pull it over here. I'm going to hold down shift. Notice it has these handlebars. I'm going to hold down shift and then I can scale it and it stays the same proportion. My hand is off the shift now and you can see that I'm stretching it. Do not stretch your type. Um, it becomes an awkward, awkward thing and it, it creates issues with read. Now because um, I told you that I love Frutiger, I'm going to stick with Frutiger. And I'm going to talk about why um, Frutiger and why um, why a font family. Notice that Frutiger has all of these versions. It has a light, a condensed, a bold condensed, a black condensed, an extra black, a light, a light italic, a Roman, which is body copy, which is the small text, italic, bold, bold, italic, black, um, black, ultra black. I'm going to say, all, I'm going to go ultra black because I'm just feeling like I want this to be super contrasty and kind of weighty in terms of title. And I'm going to decide to do a hyphen and do a return and have these guys aligning on this side as opposed to this side. This is called flush left. This is going to be called flush right. And that's when we're aligning on the right side. So we're going to have that. And then we're going to do speaks. And we're going to select that text. And I'm going to come up here. And I just simply use my eyedropper to grab that same color of text and that same size. And this one I'm going to have be really big. And I want it to feel grounded, so I'm going to bring everything down. Now, one of the subtle, really important things in typography is learning how to make subtle alignments. So notice that I brought this in over, but I'm aligning that P, and I'm doing that intentionally um, because um, I want to make a connection between this. I, if I bring it over here, uh, yes, it works because it's got a connection here. But, you know, if it's off kilter, it looks a little bit weird for those vertical alignments. This is called a, um, a, uh, this is called a descender and this is called an ascender. Um, and this is your X height which is the space between this baseline and this is called a mean line. And then anything that moves above the mean line is called an ascender. Anything that moves below the mean line is called a descender. Anyway, I'm going to drop this. Actually, I think I'm going to leave it here. I kind of like it there. Notice that I also went a little bit closer here. Um, and that's something that you also have to consider. Um, one of the things that we can do is we can actually separate this um, and have it in its own box. Right now, what I'm doing is each of these are, are the separate pieces. To get type, type in, I'm just simply clicking and typing. You could also draw a box, but it's going to confine it to that box. Um, but having them all be separate pieces allows some um, some fluid qualities that could happen. So for example, I'm going to have all these guys aligning 
um, and this be the same distance here, um, which we wouldn't normally have because those those descenders and ascenders kind of could get into um, each other's way. So the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play with two of these palettes and I'm going to do, I'm not feeling this, this, um, this color. I'm going to grab that color on that really dark navy. And I feel like that has a lot of energy. Like I would gravitate toward this because of the intense energy and um, so the next thing that I need to think about is um, notice that I'm also letting my P run off the page. That's actually in, on purpose. Um, and letting things run off as long as they don't impact the readability is not a horrible thing. So I'm going to have my text coming over here in two columns. So this is where I said, you know, you don't have to have a tight column situation going um, because here I am, my type is kind of creating this sense of column for me. So I'm going to use that. And then I'm going to give myself a space in between these two columns. They're pretty close. I'm not going to get like crazy and worry that they're a little bit off because I think it'll be fine. Um, but you can see that they're pretty close and I'm playing again with this strong alignment that we created in this composition. I'm actually going to go back and use those grids. By the way, um, to get those grids, I'm just pulling from the side. I'm just pulling from the side and bringing them in. Um, I didn't talk about that probably enough. So I'm going to pop this over and our alignment's looking pretty good. Oh, this P has an odd thing happening. All right, we'll leave it. Um, all right, so we have that as our second layer. I'm going to go ahead and lock that, and we're going to start with our third layer. Now, I'm going to give you guys a Word document, so I've got to go find that Word document. It's going to be on my desktop. It's going to be in my classes. It's going to be in typography. It's going to be rule, list of rules, so you're going to get this list of rules, and actually, I need to just open it in Word. Open. And I'll find it on my desktop and I'll get a desktop, classes, typography. One of the things you want to make sure you're doing is organizing yourself so that you know how to find things because they will. And notice these have the numbers in front of them. I'm going to ignore the numbers for now and just grab it. This is intended to be funny, but I'll probably take it out. Michelle's always right. Um, that is not true, if you ask my husband. So we're going to copy that. Um, and so remember when I was just clicking and adding my type? Um, that's not what we're going to do here because we're going to have columns of type. So I'm going to click and just drag a column. And... I'm going to come up here and we're going to change that to 10 point type and we're going to also change it to Roman which is normal and then I'll put paste my type in and um, right now it is flush right remember flush left would be this way um, and actually one of the things that I'm deciding is that these lines are kind of too long based on the way this is working so now that I see that, I'm probably, I'd rather probably have two columns of text. Let's go ahead and change the text color first before we move on. Let's see what color down here. I'm going to actually go for this lighter orange. Um, 
Oh, it doesn't look like her there. All right, let's do this. Maybe I did that lighter orange for here. So I'm going to do this darker orange. I'm going to select all of my type on that layer. And I'm going to come over here with my eyedropper. Yep. So that's one of the things that happened. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that. And I can see that this is not working for the line length. I have really like this very hard return with this big gap in between. So I'm thinking that maybe a three column would be better, like the rules would look better. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to duplicate this. Um, we're going to go ahead and get rid of some of the guides. So I'm going to come down here to guides and unlock guides, and I'm going to get rid of these guides. And they are on that layer. So I'm going to have to go unlock that layer. <clears throat> so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to hold down Option. Notice that I get a double arrow when I hold down Option. And I'm just going to drag a copy of that, leaving some space in between. And I'm going to come over here and delete all the text here. Now, one of the things I wanted to show you is that we have this little plus sign over here. That means we have extra text that's not being shown. So if I click on that I can go ahead and click another column actually it didn't give me the it didn't give it to me in the column that I created but it gave me a column of exactly the same size so I'm going to pop both of these up on this guideline um, and then think about what what's happening here and I like the idea of having big numbers on either side of here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of these rules. And as I do it, I'm going to go ahead and put a number. Um, and I'm just going to do one. And I'm going to grab this font down here. Um, but I'm going to back off on the weight and give it a lot less in size. And I'm going to just see how I feel about having these guys overlap. Um, so I'm going to do a two. And I'm going to do a copy again, and then I'm going to change that to three. Probably not going to like this with them this large, but we'll see. One of the things that I know um, is that I can do some semi-transparencies. So let's go ahead and grab these guys, first of all. And we're just playing around. We're just thinking about like all the things that we can do um, that will create a variety and interest, but still get the point across. So I'm going to use I'm going to use this color. And like that, um, and I am going to play with transparency. So I'm going to come up here to window. I know you can't see window, but I'm going to go up to window, down to transparency. And I'm just going to make them a little less than 100. So they'll be overlapping each other. And you'll see parts where they overlap. So that'll kind of be fun. And I'm going to make the bottom of the letter with the bottom of the line so that there is like a connection to how I'm doing. And I'm going to pop them in and out so that there's a little bit of fun. So I'm going to copy this again. Here's my four. 
And then we'll bring that over. I'll get rid of my rule. Now I'm going to pause and I'm going to get a whole bunch of things done and then I'll come back and we'll continue to talk about um, my thoughts about what's happening. Hi there. So um, I thought I'd restart this video um, before I expected to just because I was kind of starting to become uncomfortable with, with what was happening. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about like as you're seeing things progress like changing course and so that's what I was doing I didn't like how it looked um, with them on top of each other and I kind of started to play with the idea that they didn't touch each other but they kind of took it up different space so the the size that they become is kind of sometimes reactive to the space that I have to give them um, and I don't want them to be all too much the same. I do want them to like have a lot of different variety and flavor. So maybe it's, you know, good to like consider making one, like not one, but this three a little bit smaller. And then um, maybe the five becomes a little bit smaller, but the six gets bigger um, in reaction. Um, and I'm rotating them a little bit each time as well. So maybe the seven's going to be that size. So I'm having kind of fun with it being kind of more playful and reactive to each other. The other thing that I'm becoming uncomfortable with is I don't like the fact I'm going to make a little bit smaller and kind of bust up my rhythm. Um, I don't like how this is a different color um, than um, this because they should relate. So I'm going to come back in and I'm going to select this text and I'm going to look at my color palettes down here and see where I want to go with it and I think I'm going to go with that same color um, that those uh, were in and then maybe for these guys um, you notice that this is just a darker version because I don't necessarily need these numbers to pop out I'm gonna make them that darker version so that there is a connection visually um, but There's also some variety and these drop back because we really want the, the text to pop forward. We, we don't necessarily want the numbers to pull forward. They're just something that's kind of playful. We might actually lose these letters later. Um, I might actually just double click on that and make them a little bit darker so that they, oops, that's too dark. And so what I'm doing is I'm just coming straight down so that they drop back a little bit. We can do the same thing by um, playing with transparency as well. I could drop all of them back um, so that they become a little bit less apparent, which I actually like a lot because then I'm seeing my um, information. I'm actually not liking what's happening here um, the longer I look at it. And again, that's normal. One of the things that design is about is this trial and error process. Try something. If you don't like it, try something new. So we're going to get rid of these guys. We're going to just leave it with just the text. And we might do something else down the road. So we're going to continue getting rid of these rules. Um, that are were in the text you were given. And then get to a place where we're ready. We can see that this is part of a rule down here. So we need to um, make this a little bit longer so that rule is fully here. This is called a widow when you only have one line uh, or one letter or one word on a line so it's always best to have multiple words so I'm going to do a hard return up there 
and I'm going to do a deletion here so we have everything up here lined up. Um, and then we're going to continue on getting rid of those rules. Oops, too much. We need to do another hard return here. All right, so those are our rules. I want to stop there, and we're going to pick this up a little bit later. Um, I also today am going to do a quick um, demo on the basic tools in Illustrator. I'm just going to run through them quickly, and I wanted to do this separately from that video so that if you ever wanted to just run through the tools really quickly, you could. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. There'll be several other videos um, coming up. Thanks.